coming and I want to have some dinner rolls for dinner. And I don't want the just plain old ones that you have on a weekly basis if you do, but I want to make something a little bit more special. So I'm going to be, make a hollow dough and I'm going to make rolls out of that. So I'm going to start by proofing my yeast. So in a cup I'm going to put a, a third of a cup of warm water, one teaspoon of sugar, one tablespoon of flour, and three teaspoons of yeast. I'm just going to mix that up. And now this has got to sit just here at room temperature for about five to ten minutes until it gets frothy and it proofs. So we'll just let that sit there and I'll be back in about five to ten minutes. Our yeast is all proofed, so now we can go ahead and start making the dough. In my bowl, I have four cups of all-purpose flour. To that, I'm going to add a tablespoon of salt, a quarter cup of sugar, two eggs, a quarter cup of vegetable oil, our proofed yeast, and one and a quarter cups of warm water. I also have an extra quarter cup of flour here in case my dough is too sticky. I might want to add just a little bit. So let's get in the salt and the sugar. Just give those a quick mix. And now we can get in our eggs, our oil, our yeast. Get it all in there. You want to have all that yeast working for you. Okay. I'm going to add the water later. And I'll put it on our mixer using a dough hook. Let's just mix this until it starts coming together and I'll gradually add the water. I'm also going to need a large bowl. It's going to be greased for it to rise. Scrape down the sides a bit. Okay, I can see I definitely need that flour. I might even have to add a little bit more. We'll see. I want the dough to be sticky, but not really sticky. Again, scrape down. Okay, that dough is still way too sticky, so I'm going to add another quarter, not, a, not this whole thing, of flour. And then I'm just going to let it knead on here for about four or five minutes. Just let the machine do some of the work. So I can stick my hand in there and it's got a sticky feel to it, but it's not necessarily sticking to my finger. I've got a little bit on there, but not much. Okay, so I'm going to take this off.
just a little bit of flour on the board. Scrape this out of there. Come on. There we go. Oh, it's a nice soft dough. It's really nice. That little stickiness, but still nice and pliable. So now into our bowl, greased bowl, and I'm going to cover this up and I'm going to leave it at room temperature for at least an hour, maybe an hour and 20 minutes. We'll see how long it takes. And then I'll be back and we'll put the rolls together. Now let's continue with the challah. And I've taken the dough and I turned it out onto a floured surface and let it sit there for five minutes. I wanted it to relax a little bit. I cut it in half and I put half of the dough off to the side. So I'm going to make something with that after we finish with the rolls. And now I've got this other half that I cut in half again. And I'm going to make, I'm going to cut a piece of dough. I'm just eyeballing this. If you really want to get exact, you can start weighing. Get a kitchen scale and weigh your dough. So here we go. I'm going to see how big. I want about nine or ten inch rope. And you can see I'm already still having trouble. It's a little bit too elastic. So what I'll do is I'll put a piece down there. I won't finish it right now. And I'll do a bunch of them like that. And then I can roll them when they get a little bit more pliable after they've rested even more. I love playing with yeast dough. I really do. It's, it's just so much fun. Again, you can weigh this and then you'll have pretty exact rolls, but these are company that are friends and I don't think they're going to sit and say, well, your roll's bigger than mine. Well, they might. You never know. See how many rolls I get out of a half here. And I may not use all of this piece for one of the rolls. It depends. I may cut it shorter. Again, this is this is having fun. There's seven. Here's eight. There's eight. There's nine. And there's ten. So that's going to give me, oops, a little bit more. It's going to give me five rolls because I need two of these ropes for each roll. Let's go. Let's start with the one we started with. be pretty good sized rolls too. I mean, they're going to be almost like mini loaves. What do we got here? That's only a little over six. We want longer than that. This is where you can get kids involved. Have them make the ropes for you. I'm sure. Some of the kids would love to play with this dough. Again, I'll keep rolling those some more because they're still a bit elastic. Uh, it's getting a little bit better now, so some of these have been sitting out longer. You can see I'm getting a nice rope. That's a little over 10 inches, so that's great. Let's see if we can get this one to meet it. Okay. 
Okay, those are about the same. It's close. Okay, yeah. Pinch two ends together. And then we're just going to twist. And then we'll snake it. Make a snail, as they call these. There's our first hollow roll onto a baking sheet. These are going to have to rise again. And then before we put them in the oven, we'll put an egg wash on them. And then how you do them after that is up to you. Now, by that I mean, I like to put poppy seeds on mine. You may not like poppy seeds. You may say, I'd rather have sesame seeds. Well, put sesame seeds on. Um, but I do like poppy seeds. Another seed I do like is nigella seeds. Nigella, if you're not familiar with them, they have a slightly oniony taste to them. You can find nigella seeds. You can get them online, obviously. Just uh, Google Nigella seeds uh, or you can go to um, a Middle Eastern sometimes Asian markets will have them and you might want to just try them to see if there's something that you would like but again I'm going to put poppy seeds on mine because I like them or you can leave them plain you don't have to put any seeds on them you can just leave them as they are with a nice egg wash, they'll be nice and shiny. And there's another one. If you're a very artistic person, you may figure out different ways to roll these and braid them. You can make little loaves, little hollow loaves. Those are kind of cute too. I've seen those. You use it with three braids or if you really want to get adventurous, you can do four or five. But on small braids, that gets a little tight. So there we go. So I'm just going to keep doing this. And then in a minute, I'll show you what I'm going to do with that other big half. Well, as you can see, I have 10 rolls out of that half of that dough. The other half of the dough, I cut that in half, and this is one of the halves of that ball of dough that I had over here. I'm gonna cut this one in half, and I'm gonna do the same thing I did except in a larger form, and we're gonna make a bread. Thing is, is that this is still kind of elastic. I'm gonna just stretch that out for a little bit, start this one. back sometimes this helps makes it a little bit longer work this end you can get a lot of bread out of that small recipe of dough that was not a large recipe my for my regular challah bread um, this is a half recipe so, and in that I get two large, large loaves. I love challah bread because it's really good for toast. When it's left over, it's really good for French toast. And these rolls will keep a few days as long as you put them in either an airtight zip bag or some other kind of container that keeps the air out. And like I said, they'll keep pretty good for a few days. All right, here we go. Get these a little bit longer. Okay, and now, just as with the other one, except I'm gonna do it this way. And then starting at this end, tuck that end under it. 
and just bring it around like a snail. And underneath. And then I did the other one already. So now you have two small loaves and 10 of the rolls. I'm going to cover these up with a tea towel and they need to sit at room temperature for about, oh, 40 to 60 minutes until they're nice and puffed up. Then we'll egg wash them, we'll put the poppy seeds on because I want them, and then we'll bake them in the oven. So I'll see you back after these guys proof a little bit. Well, our hollow rolls have been rising and they've risen quite a bit. And I'm egg washing them now. These are going to go into a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes. Uh, but again, every oven is different, so you know, I start checking mine around 15 and just wait and see what happens. And I'm going to put my seeds on. I didn't, the two breads, I'm not doing those yet because I only have two racks in my oven, so I'll do these first and then I'll do those two breads that we made. And these are my poppy seeds. You have to buy poppy seeds pretty often and fresh. You can keep them for a few months. I put them in the jar like this and I put them in my refrigerator and they will stay fresh longer or you can put them in your freezer if you have room, even stay longer. But you can't like leave them in your shelf and then six months later expect that they're good because they're not they may not taste very good but i like a generous portion poppy seeds as you can see so then <clears throat> excuse me so into my oven 350 20 to 22 and i'll show you when they're done here are our harlow rolls and our two breads all done. They smell wonderful. I wish you could smell them. And now we'll have rolls for dinner and two for a breakfast tomorrow so that we can make some great French toast. Great recipe. Hope you try it.